Hi everybody, my name is Nick and welcome back to another astro exploring video. In this video I am talking about five deep sky astrophotography targets that you can image with any equipment in the northern hemisphere this winter and any winter for that matter. Now this is a list that will be accessible to anybody no matter what imaging equipment you are using there will be something on this list for you. And you might also think that there are some obvious targets missing from this list but for that I offer you two counterpoints. One, this was a list of the top five, although really it's kind of the top 10-ish. And so, you know, not everything can make the list. If any of your favorite astrophotography winter targets are missing from this list, then do leave a comment down below so that other people can find those targets and start imaging them themselves. My second point is that I didn't want to make a list that was only useful for people with really big telescopes and, you know, the bigger, more expensive setups that I have on this channel and lots of other people have as well. I wanted to make a list that was accessible for everybody, no matter what equipment you're using. So there's something that will cater for everybody here. All right, jumping into the first target, and the first target is actually an entire constellation because I could honestly make a video just around this constellation on its own and that is the constellation of orion you've got the orion nebula the running man nebula the horsehead nebula the flame nebula barnard's loop the witchhead nebula m78 and there's probably ones that i've missed off that list there but that's already seven targets just in one constellation and it doesn't matter what equipment you're using you'll either be able to focus in on on one of those targets with some deep sky imaging equipment like you can see behind me or you will have a DSLR with a 14 millimeter lens or something similar, or you might even be holding up your smartphone to the eyepiece of a telescope, um, the Orion Nebula, for example. It doesn't matter what equipment you're using, you'll be able to image at least one of these targets from the constellation of Orion. It is a wonderful part of the night sky. Honestly, if you just locate the constellation of Orion and point whatever imaging gear you have at it, you will find a nebula of some description and you will get an incredible image out of it. I do recommend using some planetary software, something like Stellarium or similar, so that you can plan for your imaging session. You can input all of your equipment into that and it will give you the field of view that you will have for your particular imaging equipment, just so that you can frame up your targets nicely. Okay, number two on this list is the Rosette Nebula, and that is located in the constellation of Minoceros, not too far away from the constellation of Orion. So if you are using a wide field setup, like I mentioned a minute ago, and are imaging Orion, then actually you can squeeze in the Rosette Nebula into that field of view as well. So like I said, point your imaging equipment at Orion, you may even get this target into the same field of view as well, which I just think is absolutely wonderful. There's just something about this nebula that makes me return to it year after year. I think it's perhaps because I've got quite a wide field set up and it's something that just absolutely fills the field of view. So I'm really cropped in on it and it fills up the entire frame. And I think it just looks absolutely brilliant, either as the rosette rotation or as a school rotation, as an RGB image or using the show palette if you have narrowband filters and a mono camera. Um, or a narrowband filter with an RGB camera using some magic in Pixinsight. It just, it's just a brilliant target. I can't recommend it enough for imaging. I return to it year after year, and I will be returning to it again this winter. Okay, next on the list is a galaxy. Yes, I'm throwing a galaxy into this for a change, and that is the Andromeda Galaxy M31, which is obviously located in the constellation of Andromeda. It is one of the very few deep sky objects that is visible to the naked eye under dark sky conditions. The other one already mentioned in this list is the Orion Nebula. Both are incredibly easy to find. You don't need a go-to mount to be able to slew to the target and find it for you. It is visible to the naked eye under the right conditions. So please do try it for yourself. Even if you have quite a basic setup, you should be able to find it in the night sky, either by it being visible to the naked eye or just using something like Stellarium just to see where it is in the night sky. It's such a massive object that if you're pointing your imaging equipment roughly in the right area, then you're probably going to be able to pick it up. With it being a galaxy, you can just take a 30 second exposure and it will show up quite comfortably in the field of view. You'll get a really good image just from a 30 second shot. And quite a common thing that people do with the Andromeda Galaxy in post-processing is overstretching it to get some really nice detail in the dust lanes, but then that means you end up blowing out the core. So you can um, either isolate the core 
in your post-processing software so that you're just stretching the dust lanes and leave the core alone so that you're not blowing it out. Or what you can do, and this is also true for the Orion Nebula, is take some shorter exposure images, something like um, 15, 30 seconds, something like that, and blend those in with your longer exposures, for example, three minutes. And I don't recommend going over three minutes for the Andromeda Galaxy because it's so bright and you'll just blow out the core by taking longer exposures. And by blending those shorter exposures with your longer exposures, the core in the center won't be quite as bright and therefore it shouldn't be as blown out in your final image. Okay, number four on the list, although really it's like number 20 or something, I'm not very good at doing these lists as you can tell, is the Pleiades and the California Nebula. So this is two for one special again. Um, you can find the Pleiades in the constellation of Taurus, also known as M45, uh, all the Seven Sisters, and the California Nebula is NGC 1499, I think. Now, why is the Pleiades such a great target? Well, again, it is an open star cluster that is visible to the naked eye. Again, you need reasonably dark skies, although not that dark, to be able to spot the Pleiades. I'm in Bortle 4 conditions, and I can see the Pleiades with the naked eye very comfortably indeed. And that's not me bragging about the conditions of my sky that's just to say that it is genuinely quite a bright target so it is reasonably easy to find it looks great no matter what focal length you're using so you could use a really wide field shot with a dslr a 14 millimeter lens a 50 millimeter lens it doesn't really matter if you're using that kind of setup you'll also get the california nebula into the field of view and that will make for a really great wide field astrophotography shot or if you have some equipment like you can see behind me, then you will be focusing on one target at a time and you could either choose to just image one at a time and have two images, or you could do a big mosaic. Um, it's a really great part of the sky to be imaging. So I can't recommend either of those targets enough. I think they both look absolutely fantastic. If you're imaging the Pleiades, then because it's a broadband target, I really recommend to try as best you can to do that when the moon isn't very bright in the sky. And I know that's easier said than done. We don't choose when clear skies occur and they generally only seem to occur during full moon. If that's the case, then you know, please feel free to still give it a go. I often shoot broadband targets under full moon just because that's when my clear skies happen. At this time of year, at my latitude, I can image the Pleiades basically all night long. You'll see it rising pretty early in the sky in the southeast and it will be available to image basically all night so you can get a great amount of time on that target and the California Nebula as well. Okay, and number five on the list is also two targets and that is the Flaming Star Nebula and the Tadpole Nebula. And I really don't know why I called this top five targets. I mean, what, what are we on now? 15, 16, something like that? You can see I kind of cheat with the title and then just blurt out basically every deep sky object that I like imaging in the winter sky. <laughs> Flaming Star Nebula, IC405, and Tadpoles is IC410. Located in the constellation of Auriga, these are two targets that I personally have never actually imaged before, but really enjoy looking at everybody else's images on social media. I think they are two absolutely stunning targets and clear skies permitting i will image these this year my problem is that my favorite targets on this list are numbers one and two so anything in the constellation of orion and also the rosette nebula and then by the time i get down to the flaming star and the tadpoles i haven't had enough clear nights and we've moved into the spring and galaxy season and i can no longer image them anymore but if I do get a chance to image these this year, I absolutely will. They are both absolutely wonderful targets to image. With my field of view, it gives me a really good opportunity to try a mosaic for the first time using the mosaic planner in the ASI Air, which I recently bought if you watched my latest video. Of course, imaging these targets at night would be much easier with darker skies. Now, light pollution not only impacts climate change, but also local wildlife and believe it or not our ability to sleep well at night that's where ren comes in a website where you can calculate your carbon footprint then offset it by funding a diverse mix of carbon reduction projects like planting trees and protecting rainforests once you sign up to make a monthly contribution to offset your carbon footprint you receive monthly updates from the projects you support you'll receive photos and details about every tree planted and every ton of carbon offset with the money you have spent. My favorite project that Wren is supporting right now is the Amazon Rainforest Protection. This project uses satellite imagery, drone footage, and video technology to quickly detect, report, and stop illegal deforestation. I calculated my own carbon footprint with Wren and was actually pleasantly surprised by the result. 
do you think you can beat my score? Well, I've partnered with Ren so that the first 100 people to sign up with the link in the description down below have 10 extra trees planted in their name. Thank you so much to Ren for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel, and thank you so much for watching this video. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, then please do so. Please also give the video a thumbs up because that genuinely helps it spread to more people. Again, thank you for watching. My name is Nick, and I'll see you in the next video.